Despite this deal, climate change already has transformed parts of the world. Warmer weather has opened up frozen parts of the Arctic, giving energy giants another area to explore. But mapping those areas is a dangerous job. The elusive Northwest Passage connects the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. But that could lead to a real disaster. Sean Caleb's went there to find out more. As ice retreats, more Arctic waters are open for navigation, and that means vessels such as the Umiak-1, a Canadian bulk container ship owned by the Fednaf Shipping Company, will be making more trips into frozen regions. This ship is a polar class four icebreaker, as powerful as any non-nuclear icebreaker in the world, according to Captain Mike Lee. This ship is made to first cut the ice and then kind of lift the weight of the ship onto the ice and just continuously break it. On this trip, the Umiak is going from Quebec to a copper mine in northern Labrador to load ore. But where the Umiak really makes its money is in the worst of the worst conditions. And a normal vessel would either um, be uh, holed or it would uh, break propellers, break rudders. Uh, they it's impossible to do it. It's estimated the Arctic holds roughly 25 percent of the remaining natural resources in the world. It's no secret the Northwest Passage, connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, is opening, luring more and more ships into treacherous waters. Some have even labeled the Northwest Passage Panama Canal North, meaning container ships, cruise ships, and other vessels are finding the icy water more appealing to trim time and money off their trips. But many in the industry say that's a bad idea. For a ship, for instance, to load in New York and go to Shanghai via the Northwest Passage, no. I don't believe that that'll ever be economical, certainly in the next 40, 50 years. Tom Patterson decides where fed enough ships, like the Umiak, can and cannot go in Arctic waters. The Umiak is a massive vessel operating with 30,000 horsepower. That is three times as powerful as most bulk container ships its size. Built for $90 million, it also cost three times as much as a traditional ship. So as you can imagine, the Umiak has the very latest high-tech wizardry to avoid damaging ice. It will tell us here on the ship what kind of ice concentrations, ice types we can expect along our route. Uh, and then we can, with that information, we can maybe deviate into easier ice regimes to avoid the, the bad stuff. We've been spending many, many months and years and, uh, and money developing the technology. The technology today exists to take oil and gas out of the Arctic. It exists to operate all year round and it will require very specialized, expensive tonnage to operate in the winter time. Even with the array of high-tech equipment like radar, people on the bridge still keep eyes on the water because this is what they run into even in the summer. Icebergs that come down from the north. And when they break up, the little bits are called bergy bits, and the even smaller portions are called growlers. And those things can simply devastate the hull of your average cargo ship. A year ago, Fednuff became the first ship to sail unescorted through the Northwest Passage. But the company points out it was a heavy-duty bulk container ship. And Patterson, for one, is concerned that lesser vessels and cruise ships may tempt fate in the Northwest Passage, causing a bad accident or spill. And the Arctic is, is a very pristine environment, and the people who live there depend on us to give them the best set of ships. We must mitigate the risk, because that environment cannot be disturbed. Sean Cadlebs, CCTV, aboard the Umiak One.